All right, welcome back to video number three, or is this going to be four? Ah, sorry, this is four for channel three, no drafts. And we open a very, I'm going to call it a bomb uncommon. It's an eternal sky lord. It's really, really good. Uh, yeah, it's better than Tomic by far. The thing with these amass tokens is like they're, if you can give them flying, and if your opponent doesn't have a way of uh, answering, it's just a game winner. So now I think it's an easy spell gorger weird. We could consider Dreadhorde twins, but spell gorger weird is just way better. Yeah, pr pretty straightforward. I mean, look, they're both red cards. They're both red cards. So, you know, when in doubt, take the cheaper one. And this this thing can easily become like a four four or five five. Wow! Now there's a death sprout. Yeah, we have to take death sprout. There's nothing else uh, in this pack that we couldn't get later. Like we could also take a gateway plaza, but <clears throat> death sprout has just way bigger upside. All right, now we have Opnixels and a Thunder Drake. You know, I've, I've gone up on Opnixels. I also like Thunder Drake a lot, and this thing just wins games. Uh, it, it's a difficult choice, because like, I still think uh, Eternal Skylords are best card, which is blue. Blue pairs well with black as well. I think I'm going to take a Thunder Drake, only because my my favorite archetype in this format is uh, blue red. I don't I don't think it's a secret by now. If you watch my videos, it's just so strong. So if it's a close pick between two cards like that, then I'm going to go with the color that I prefer. Although you could make the argument that it, it was appropriate to take uh, um, Omnixilis because I was just past a Death Sprout, and now I'm past a Leyline Prowler, which is good. But I think I'm just going to take uh, Honor the God Pharaoh or a Sky Theater Strix. Probably under the God Pharaoh. We'll find out soon enough if we if we're making a mistake, kind of forcing spells, forcing uh, blue red. We'll see if the cards dry up. So now there's it's a Healy Silver Wing. There's a Wonder Strike, which could help us proliferate. Uh, I'd rather take the Colorless card. Yeah, I think uh, Sahili Silver Wing is more likely to make a deck. All right, now there's another Thunder Drake. That's really good. This card just become. I mean, it could, it could it could become very big. Okay, so there's an Invade the City. This could be a good payoff for the spells deck. We don't have too many spells yet, but we should be able to get some. And it's a good card. I mean, again, it combos with Eternal Skylord. You make a huge thing, you fly over top, and then you just win. So now there's a Cure's Dam Breaker, which proliferates. There's a Skulker, which could be a, like a win condition, very slow one. But I think Cure's Dam Breaker is a little bit better. So Spark Reaver is very good in case we end up, uh, I guess, blue-black. Solid card. New Horizons, sure, Splash Enabler. New Horizons Wheeling is actually a really good sign. Uh, this card in the black-green deck, uh, it, it could do a lot of work. If you have a QR, you could tap your land for four, and you, you could you know do some silly things with Super Ramp. Giant Growth or Charity Extractor. More, more likely than not, I'll need a... I'm more likely to need a Charity Extractor. Giant Growth is really not a good card. It, it might work in some green red aggro deck with a lot of trample creatures 
as just a way of getting direct damage across, but otherwise it's, you could use it as like a, a sideboard card against red because it has some two for one implications, but in general, it's not very good. Let's take a Goblin Assailant. We don't have a single two drop yet. Hopefully we'll get a couple of uh, Callous Dismissals. Well, Bio Essence Hydra is very strong. We don't have any, uh, we don't have any Planeswalkers yet. But the fact that it could come down is just this huge stupid thing. It's, uh, yeah, I think I need to take it here over Callous Dismissal. All right, so after much deliberation, I'm actually taking Callous Dismissal. This is a this is a super painful pick, but I don't have a single planeswalker. I don't know how many I'm gonna get. Okay, well now we get past Jaya, which we're taking. But uh yeah, I mean Kal's dismissal just it's it, it's gonna win me more games than Hydra. And I don't really wanna you know move start moving over into green. And in fact by passing that I'm more likely to wheel a playable card for my colors from that pack. So yeah, this is an easy Jaya. And maybe we can get the uh, Contentious Plan, Bond of Insight, Crunch, any one of those at play. That was a very difficult passing Hydra. I mean, it's it's a it's such a good card, but Kalos' Missile just bounces it and gets you in for the last points of damage. So Dreadhorde Butcher. Well, this is a cool card. It's much better in standard. You could sometimes it runs away with the game, but I'd rather have a burning profit. Wow, Tybalt. Yeah, no, we still take Tybalt over Electromancer. This thing is stupid. If you can proliferate and make like three or four of these devils. It just gives you so much flexibility. All right, Chandra's Triumph, pretty straightforward. Hopefully we can take this Assassin out by now since we're not gonna need him. So this is actually a splashable card in some decks that need an alternate win con, but I don't think it's what we want. I think it's between Crash Descent and Totally Lost. So with Eternal Skylord, Crush the Sun becomes a marginally a little bit better. If we don't end up playing Death Sprout, there's room in my deck for it right now. Uh, Uncrop Invader, Goblin Assault Team. Kind of a terrible pack. I'll take uh, Uncrop Invader. It's, it's really made for the black red deck, but if we have enough things like uh, Out of the God Pharaoh and Kalos Dismissal, you can have uh, one ones that you can sack for value or just to have on the board to threaten to sack. Yeah, this is the yeah, we can take Nahiri. She's not particularly good in this deck, but I think it still makes sense to pick her. I, I haven't found that the creature heavy versions of the spells deck are good. I mean it's not it's called it's called a spells deck for a reason. So it's unlikely that we're going to play her, but maybe in some matchups where I want to deter attackers, uh, we could bring her in. She also, like I mentioned, she also triggers a spell gorge of weird. So th there is some benefit in having a card like that. Bond of Passion, I'm not very passionate about. Our deck is not looking aggro. It's looking like a bad control deck right now. If I have seven mana, well, I mean, I'm more likely to want a Bond of Passion than I am a Cyclops, to be honest. As bad as it is, I think it's the right pick. Grim Initiate for uh, Oncrop Invader or another three drop. I think I'll take a one. This, this guy can do a lot of work. Godfrow Statue, I take in case I get, I open um, Karn the Great Creator. They're worth a little more. Uh, in those scenarios. Mm, let's see, Crunch Wrangler, maybe. 
Oh, okay, it auto picked ghost form. Uh, crocodile, you know, it doesn't matter, I'm not playing either of those cards. Child growth. All right, this is an interesting pick. So Parhelion is not what I'm looking to do. Davriel is a win condition. Well, I shouldn't call it that, but it's uh, it could be it could be a very good card. There's also Lazata plating, which is okay, but Davriel is better. I'll take Davriel. Maybe we'll get a Mana Geode or a couple of Globes, some ways of splashing. I'm not beyond, uh, I'm not past playing that card. Okay, Narset is actually decent for this deck. There's a Bleeding Edge, and we could try to move into black. But if we can find, I mean, there's also Spark Harvest. Wow, this is difficult. Double black is not splashable. We don't really have good black cards. I'm just going to take, all right, I'm going to take Narset. Okay, even Eternal's a good pick for us. Narset's reversal is unplayable and limited. Unless, like, your opponent's playing uh, Finale of Eternity or something. <laughs> you know, like, if you can, if you can, if this is the only way you can win by copying, like, a game-ending spell, uh, like, okay, you, I could see sideboarding in Narset if your opponent's playing, like, Finale to Glory, and you cannot win otherwise. So you kind of copy his Finale to Glory and get your own army and negates a spell. But it's it's too situational. It doesn't actually stop the spell unless you can counterspell it at some point later. And it's not, uh, it's just not good. I guess no escape is the pick. That's kind of terrible. Because my, my three slot is congested already. Okay, Tibble Trager is one of the best things we could have been passed. There is an Arlen in here, and maybe I was supposed to be green, but I don't know. Oh my god, Tulsimir. Tulsimir, pick six. I mean, there's literally, not, I'm not playing uh, Wall of Runes. I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to end up playing him, but <laughs> come on. If I can find a, like a cheap, efficient way of splashing him, I'm totally doing it. Uh, spell keep a weird, sure. I take Davriel out. I'm still not uh, hung up on passing the plating. I don't think it's. I don't think it's that good. Uh, Merfolk Skydiver or Sarkin's Catharsis is more likely to be a factor for us. So I'll move it to the sideboard for now, but it's certainly playable. Domri's Ambush. Yeah, again, if we find uh, good ways of splashing, maybe we could pull something off. Another No Escape. Creature or Planeswalker spell. Well, it doesn't get everything, but it gets most things. I think I probably want Second no escape. Gives me this transmutation, sure. Starts in the sideboard. Pollen Bride Druid. I cannot believe this card's going last. Bent band together. Wow. Return to nature. Maybe I kind of overforced this uh, spells theme. Not sure. Very awkward looking deck. Not the best curve. Hmm. Yeah, this is going to be tricky. All right, so I think our best chance of winning with this deck is to just go as aggro as possible. So we cut Sahili Silverwing. We play Grim Initiate, Kalos Dismissal, even the Assailant. 
unfortunately. Um, Nars, it's okay. Nars, it'll find something. It can find non-creature, non-land. Yeah, so it finds planeswalkers. It could find Jaya. It's not bad. And maybe you can get one more trigger off of it if we can proliferate with Dam Breaker. So we need one more card. Well, Nahiri kind of works with Tybalt. Yeah, maybe Nahiri will be fine in this deck. Okay, so... I think 9-8 is fine. The only other card I'm looking at is a Bond of Passion, or maybe even Sarkhan's Catharsis. Maybe we don't need like the On Crop Invader. And Grim Initiate, and Grim Initiate, and instead we play like a Bond of Passion and Sarkhan's Catharsis. Mm, this might be slightly better, but kind of I'm kind of tempted to play these cards. I'll take a minute and we'll jump in, but I think uh, I've seen Gruminisha do quite a bit of work. But then the only sacrifice outlet is on Crop Invader. See, like if we if we took out Nexilus, this would be more playable. Like you could watch the last draft. Uh, Gruminisha did a ton of work. In this deck, I don't think that's going to happen. Okay, let's try it like this. This is an all-in deck. Okay, so I, uh, I decided actually in favor of Grimanishid because of the double Thunder Drake. Just as a cheap spell, like it's good early. It can get in a few points of damage. You could sack it to on crop invader, and later on, it's uh, a more reliable way of triggering uh, Thunder Drake for the extra plus one plus one counter. And it kind of it makes sense if we're doing Bond of Passion, we might as well do Grim Initiate. This is the creature heavy spells aggro deck that I don't really like, but you know if we can get some damage early enough. We can uh, bring, you know, we can just kill him from 10, basically. So Sarkin's Catharsis, we play it off uh, Spellkeeper Weird. This could be a win condition. Yeah, I think this deck is like a, it's, it's a 2 and one deck. It's not a 3 no deck. I'll give it like a, probably a B, B minus C plus. It's not, not, not anywhere close to what a real spells deck can do. But maybe I'm underestimating, I could be wrong. Maybe spells is just so strong that uh, even a mediocre build, build like this can, can get there. Yep, this is a keep. See if we want to kill anything. Nothing. Mountain. Okay. Need to find an island at some point. Hopefully, we will. There we go. So, this might get countered, but I'm still running out Thunder Drake. Okay, I'm next to the scroll to sure. Fair enough. So 
So opponent playing a similar deck to ours. That's fine. Contentious plan. Yeah, aren't we happy that we have a Kalos Dismissal here? <clears throat> yeah, we should also remember about Blast Zone. So it's uh, three counters on it now. Okay. Opponent's just got a ton of removal in his hand. We're going to save the, the mountain for uh, Honor the God Pharaoh. And I'm happy just getting this one attack and not playing anything else for now. There's nothing else I could do. Okay. So let's use uh, Chandra's Triumph. He's going to sack it to his own ab ability, but this fills up my graveyard for Invade the City. I guess I could have used it, but it feels like uh, I should do it after Bond of Passion, just to have a slightly bigger creature. Like the difference between having a 3 3 and a 4 4 can be significant. Ashiok Skulker, okay. Yuck. This isn't exactly pressuring our opponent, but we get we get four four damage, we get him down to thirteen. You know, uh, and maybe I could do my Sarkan, Sarkan's uh, uh, what do you call it? The deal five to any target plus uh, getting it back with uh, Spellkeeper weird. That's one win condition. Otherwise, I think uh, I might lose. Like, especially if he has time he has Epiphany or card draw, could be could be trouble. Who's out? Is it three three now? Okay. I'm actually glad I waited uh, because my opponent had a Kalos dismissal of his own. Under the Godfarer would be a good draw. There we go. And actually now to here he's a good draw. We can play both our creatures. This is actually good. We might just pull it off. So the blast zone can kill both uh, finisher and uh, invader. So I don't see a reason not to play it. If he wants to use mana to kill his own creature, that's fine. I'd rather just have more, uh, more pressure on the board. 
All right, perfect. So question is, do we attack with Tybalt's Ranger? Trade with Finisher? I don't think we do. We could draw some of our cheap removal spells to kill Finisher to force the trade with Skulker. I think we just pass here. Okay, he chooses not to put any counters on Blast Zone. Mm, we can deal with that. Again, if we get the Hiri, then Rager becomes, uh, let's see, I have eight. So five, uh, five power first strike. I guess even the Grim, what's his name, is not the worst draw because then it'll let Uncrop Invader attack as a five power first strike. Jai is very good. <coughs> And Jaya lets me attack with uh, Tybalt's Rager because now it can kill like finish Raska's Finisher and even Eternal. I think it makes sense to attack like this just with Rager. Let's see how he blocks. Okay. There's really no reason to pump, but I'll do it anyway. And then we kill Raska's finisher. That's a good trade. Unless you have some trick. Okay, nothing. Raska's finisher dies. And I don't want to minus Jaya yet. Doesn't feel good uh, killing zombie army. So he might uh, spark harvest. Uh, well, that was greedy. I guess I should have used it to hit the zombie army. But I mean, you can't really no one advance that your opponent's playing uh, Spark Harvest and he's got it in his hand. I guess we pass. So Thunder Drake could be a good draw. Mm, what's this? Dovin. Okay, okay. So he doesn't even minus Dovin. No escape. No escape could be good. Cure is dam breaker. Let's play an island. Proliferate on zombie army. And now we can attack our opponent. Okay, I imagine, okay, you have Swine's Thirst. Well, I can't counter this. So we'll just have to have, we'll just have to let it resolve. It's okay, I'm happy with the Cure's Dam Breaker and a No Escape in hand. Okay. I think I want to kill Dovin first. I 
He might crack Blast Zone to kill on Crop Invader. Okay, chooses not to. Sure. Should, might as well attack with the zombie army. Yeah, let's kill Dovin so we can start getting in with the uh, Dam Breaker next turn. Oh, I did not see that mobilized district on the battlefield. Wow, that is unfortunate. <laughs> when the heck did he drop that? That was so sneaky. Uh. <laughs> oh well, I still think... Uh... Hopefully, this is not going to be that big of a problem. Yep, let's counterspell that. Scry one. Bottom that. Grim Initiate. All right, so Grim Initiate can hold back the zombie army but certainly not a very good draw. Let's see, what do we have in our deck? Uh, yeah, I'll chump, it doesn't matter. I need to do it sooner or later anyway. I'll keep her weird. So this can back, this can get back, invade the city, and we could win with that. So it would only be a 4-4, four, four, but it would stop. Uh, it would stop everything. Norse, it's also good. Counterspell. Okay. So I don't want to sacrifice Spellkeeper yet because he's holding everything back. So let's see if maybe we can find find a better alternative. All right. So he's going to sacrifice one of these things. Let's double block Harold. Lazatep Behemoth, okay. Uh, okay, well, I could take one more hit, but I mean, what do I get back? Cal's dismissal is not going to do it. Invade the city is not going to do it. Bond of Passion, also not going to do it. So I could take one hit, see what else I draw. Oh, never mind. Yeah, because he's got Mobilized District. Okay, we can just concede. All right, we definitely made some uh, misplays this game, but I think our deck is quite good. Opponent is playing two utility lands, which is 
quite powerful blast zone and mobilized district that's like having two extra cards and when you get down through almost the end of your deck it could be the the difference so i think uh sahili silver wing could be good instead of like maybe Huh. Maybe I take out Bond of Passion. All right, looks good. We should note that the first game took uh, quite a bit of time. So <laughs> I'm behind by about a minute. It's not something that I need to be concerned about yet, but it's it should be noted that these, you know, game one went uh, longer than 50% of most games, I think, something like that. All right, let's go under the God Pharaoh. Oh, let's attack first. All right, discard mountain. And not bad. So let's attack and then play Thunder Drake, keeping up Chandra's Triumph. I don't think there are any flash creatures or anything like that, but still. Okay. So dodging a counter there is pretty good, but it looks like we're going to get hit by Opnixils' Cruelty. Not much we could do there. Skylord Eternal. So would I rather Jaya get countered, Nahiri, or Eternal Skylord? I'm tempted to slam Skylord, but maybe we should play Nahiri for playing into a counter spell. Yeah, I'd rather lose Nahiri. If I can keep Eternal Skylord, it could be, it could be a very quick match. Of course, the opponent could also have Kalos Dismissal to bounce the token. But let's see if this resolves. Okay, good, good. So that's that's actually what uh, I was playing around. So now I don't feel bad. Okay, and now that our opponent is tapped out, uh, we could consider playing Skylord Eternal here, but he's got uh, Soren's Thirst up. So if he wants to go Soren's Thirst to kill a 1-1, I think I'm fine with that. I'd rather resolve Skylord Eternal now, knowing I can get it around a counter spell. So he's got a choice. He can take he can he can kill the zombie army and then he prevents three. Okay, but I still okay, that's fine. I still amass two and I have a two-two flyer. And no attacks. I should play at the island in case I want to play Jaya and Chandra's Triumph next turn. Gleaming Overseer, okay. <clears throat> 
Yeah, so that was the reason to play out the land last turn, because uh, if we drew a land here, we could double spell Jaya into Chandra's uh, Triumph. I kind of want to kill Spellkeeper now. Because you can't sack it, and now I'll attack. He can't block as I could do two two damage from Jaya. So okay. No problem. I can jump with Grim Initiate. Jaya takes one. And then I get a three three. Okay, okay. I'm just going to keep attacking here. All I need to do is get opponent down to five and then it's game over. Uh, Delvin is a problem, but he can't kill Jai. He can just take her to one. So it's only another creature, it's not a uh, planeswalker. Okay, place hippo, that's fine. I think I'm going to attack. Yeah, because if he takes it, then he's within uh, Sarkhan's Catharsis range. And even if he doesn't, then I trade for a bigger creature, and then even Eternal, after two hits, puts him within lethal. Okay. Callous Dismissal, so I can Callous Dismissal Jaya and get him to seven. Yeah, it seems pretty good. So let's bounce Jaya. Oh, I can't replay her this turn. Oh, that kind of changes things. Yeah, Dolan is a little bit annoying. All right, I want 20 life. I can I can go the long game. I'm going to wait for a turn where I can do this and replay it. Otherwise, it's kind of... I don't feel like it makes sense doing that. Can I attack with on crop invader? So this becomes a four power first strike. Oh, it seems pretty good. No, I'm not gonna attack. Okay, never mind. Let's just let's just hang back.
Okay, I'll I'll take uh, I'll let Jai die. It's fine. Nurse, it's a good one. Okay, Tibalt is also a good one. Uh, that's unfortunate, but not not the end of the world. Localized district. Let's see what he does. Attacking Narset. I think I'm okay with that. Let that resolve. Dovin dies. Dam breaker is also good. I could even Cal's dismissal to bolt replay him. That seems pretty good. Let's do that. And I can even attack with on crop invader now. Sack the devil, ping OP. This is not how I kind of imagined uh, this deck playing out, but it's still very good. Sure. Attacking to bolt. Okay, let's block. Okay, so unless he has another Sorn's Thirst, I think we won. Okay, so we got eight minutes to win. We are getting low on time. We need to play fast. Would Kazmina's transmutation be any good? It stops uh, Ashiak Skulker. So what's my worst card? Probably Nahiri in this matchup. All right, now that I'm kind of uh, really behind on time, I'm gonna play faster and limit the commentary.
No obnixilis cruelty. Okay, okay. That's good. Spark harvest, fine. Let's play Jaya, get in for an extra point of damage. Well, if I play Jaya, then she dies to. Well, no, she doesn't die to mobilize district. I can protect her with Cure's Dam Breaker next turn. An opponent will have to choose between attacking or playing something. Okay. Ooh, Eternal Skylord's also a good one. Um, yeah, I'll offer the, well, I could also go, let's see, I have six. Let's attack first, see what opponent does. Okay, so he goes for the trade. So then we kill Skulker and let's play Skylord first. It gives us slightly more value off Kiora's Dam Breaker. And if our opponent wants to waste a turn killing Jaya, that's fine also, because I get in for five, actually six with uh, Dam Breaker. And then my opponent's really behind because he's got no board state. Okay. Interesting. So let's see what our options are. I can just kill the zombie army and get in for three. Let's do that. And then go Dam Breaker, Proliferate Jam. Oh boy, that's not good. I got there. Next match. Okay, welcome to match two, round one. I do want to play first. Perfect. Keep. Yeah, I'm not too sure how I fell behind on time last game. I usually play relatively fast, but <clears throat> looks like something was slowing me down. Okay. Let's get down Spellgorger Weird. Sure. How much do you want to bet that if I attack with Spellgorger Weird, he's not going to block? But let's not, let's not tempt fate. Uh, once and play a uh, profit. <laughs> Ooh, okay, opponent unfortunately has to pass the turn there. I'm not sure what's going on. Um,
All right, in that case, I kind of just want to play Eternal Skyward now because this puts a, puts a faster clock on our opponent. And next turn, I'll start attacking with everything. Yeah, because with like with a nose keep in hand, it's going to be very difficult for him to catch up. Yeah, even if he plays this, uh, it's still going to be very tricky to come back from behind. I mean, yeah, he does have five cards in hand, and he did find his mountain, so things are going to change a little bit because of that. But I'm still glad I played out uh, Eternal Skylord last turn. This gives me a clean attack with Rager. And if I draw a Jai, that could also be good. Okay, uh, let's attack just with the zombie army. Play Invader and pass. There's an argument for keeping up no escape, but Invader can attack through both blockers or threaten to attack through both blockers. All right, let's attack like this. So now we can keep up no escape. I mean, we don't have to cast it. If, if our opponent's playing something that's not going to let him uh, come back, we can save it for later and uh, get something good with it. Yeah, like this does not really change the situation for him. If he can't kill our flyer, then uh, it's going to be difficult for him to win. It would make Spellgorger Weaver uh, weird better. So there's an argument for <coughs> there is an argument for for uh, attacking with him as well. But let's just attack like this again. Okay, so opponent's looking for an answer for either the flyer. Yeah, like again, I don't need to know escape that. that. That does nothing on this board state. Another no escape, okay. Uh, I think I'm going to keep Rager back just because I want to have access to both no escapes in case I need them. So let's sack this uh, and he's not going to get this cry.
Yeah, so now I definitely want to cast no escapes because um, this will give me a flyer when I invade the city. Interesting, no, nothing. Five cards in hand, not casting anything. That is strange to say the least. Okay. <laughs> I just don't see any reason to rush. We're sitting on two hard counters. Yep, let's leave that on top. Leave that on top. I don't think we need this. Let's bottom it. I know we have uh, on crop invader, but uh, there's, there are better things that we can draw. Again, I'm not in a rush. We have one more counter in hand. Okay, Saxus Charity Extractor. Still can't find a second source of red. He's gonna have some double red cards in his hand. I imagine that's the reason why. I'm just not countering that. Congrats, Rampage. Okay, let's sacrifice Jam. Okay, Kira's Dam Breaker is a good one. And I still have the counter spell up, which is excellent. So this makes Spell Gorger weird a 5 5, but I'm still not attacking. Again, we're just hanging out. We could triple block. Yeah, it's not good. No, no need to uh, throw away a creature there. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, this. Uh... Okay. This this is pretty bad. Unfortunately, I can't counter it. Okay, had I known he had it, I would have killed the zombie army. That's all right. It's not uh, the worst thing that can happen. All 
our opponent's still not in a good position. Aid the Fallen, okay. And we can cover that. Okay, this becomes a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, now opponent's really in trouble. Let's bottom that. Callous Dismissal. Tybalt. Okay, Tybalt's also good. So he's going to make Spell Gojigurd bigger. And I'll go invade the city right now just to make it uh, an 8 power creature. Okay. So pretty straightforward. I mean, this mediocre deck is surprisingly doing well. I think Rise Descent is better than the Hiri in this matchup as well. Although maybe that's not right. Maybe maybe we should leave it like this. Let's try again. <coughs> yep. I'm gonna bounce it now, wait till it gets a counter. Sure. Well, that is a problem. I guess let's count as dismissal and attack on Grath. We could still uh, race with Eternal Skylord into Kira's Dam Breaker, uh, but if he has removal, then we might be in trouble. Let's kill Sahili. Or, sorry, I should say, let's attack Sahili. So I guess I can double block Spell Gorgia Weird, but it's... Uh, not a good idea to do that. Any instant speed move he has is just going to make it a 5-5, five five, which would kill my Skylord and uh, Spellgorger would live. So I might bring in Totally Lost from the sideboard just to make sure that I can deal with later, deal with Spellgorger if it gets too big. On Grass Rampage, sacrifices a creature. I guess I'm gonna sacrifice. Still sacrificing Spellkeeper, weird. This keeps the zombie army back and I only take five. Okay. All right, let's kill Sahili. Good, so now we're outside of Jai's range, so uh, 
he doesn't have double black for spark harvest. So we should be able to get some damage across. Eight the fallen. All right. So getting back an Ongrath. So Spell Gorger becomes a 7-7. Seven, seven. I could still double block him. He doesn't have good attacks. He might attack with the zombie army to trade with the Skylord. And me being it. Yeah, he's actually making a smart attack. So let's double block this. So eight, okay. Take five, I go to three. He might have some direct damage as well. So I might be dead already, I just don't know it. So let's go with Thunder Drake. Give it a plus one plus one counter. And let's kill Ongrath. Uh, I'm gonna keep the four four back to trade with the zombie army. But we need to kill Ongrath. Okay. Well, I mean, we can still win. Let's attack with Rager. This way I can take out the uh, Herald and the Servo and take two bodies off the board. And if he doesn't block, I'm gonna pump the, pump the crap out of it. Wow, okay. I am assuming it's gonna get zapped with removal, but whatever. Oh, it's such a good card. Look at that, seven damage out of nowhere. Yeah, we sacrifice Rager. Nope. Kill the servo. Mm. We're not really in a position to attack. Yeah, we need all our blockers. We're at three life, so. Easy decision to keep everything back. Well, we need to kill that ASAP. Okay. I guess he just wants to have a 6-6. Six, six. <clears throat> well, Jaya to the rescue. So I go to one. Okay, yeah. So I go to one and then I need to hope that the counter spell helps me get there somehow. Nope. I mean, do I even, do I really care if that comes down? Do I really care? I think I need to do this because, yeah. Jaya strength is good. That can kill spell gorger. And now I can actually maybe 
attack. But even if he has an instant that deals four off Jaya, now we need to start attacking. So I'm gonna attack with zombie army. And uh, I mean, look, worst case scenario, if he's got removal for one of my creatures, I chump, I don't die. But if I don't start attacking now, then I'm just gonna lose. Okay, yeah, I mean, that was inevitable. Okay, sideboard, how do I win? Kazmina's transmutation is not very good against them. Bond of passion. <laughs> Am I seriously considering this? Let's not play that. Uh, bond of passion. Mm. All right, let's go all in. And of course, immediately punished by having Bond of Passion in our opening hand. This is not something you want to have in your opening hand. You want to draw this later. I'm like turn, turn eight, turn nine to finish out the game. Opponent also playing Grim Initiate. All right, I see. I see what's going on here. Ah, oh, Jai is greeting. All right, all right. <coughs> Opponent is stuck on mana. Looks like he had missed a land drop. It's, it, I'm in an awkward spot as well because, I mean, first of all, I can't cast anything. I guess I could cast Narset. She dies, but uh, I mean, this, wow, I miss also, and I know three lands. Uh, that's not good. Uh, so there's three minus three, eight, six, eleven. So there's only eleven lands. All right, well, we got lucky that we can cast a Thunder Drake now. And that blanks both of their creatures. Okay. Another Thunder Drake. All right, I'm down for that. Let's attack. So Omnixos' cruelty could really get us if he. <coughs> If that's what he has, then I'm taking six, I go to 12, and then I gotta go on defense. But again, I'm thinking that I have Bond of Passion, and if my opponent is stumbling, okay, that's actually fine, I can sacrifice the Tap Drake. And now he can only get in for three, which is fine. So he's representing Samet's uh, whatever. I'm not gonna block. 
Okay. Okay. Interesting. So I think I need to keep everything back. I'm in a little bit of trouble. He managed, I mean, he managed to play out a couple of good creatures. Uh, I could attack with the zombie army, I guess, right? Yeah, I, I should attack with a zombie army. Okay. Attacking with everything. Okay, so let's go. Block here. Here and here. I could also jump this and then uh, kill Grim Initiate. Seems reasonable. And if he wants to cast the plus one, plus, plus two, plus one, Samet Spirit, whatever, that's fine. Don't think I'm gonna no escape it. <clears throat> so if I steal spell gorger, I can attack for three, four, five, six, seven, not good enough. Let's just attack like this. Crush the scent, whatever they play. And then it should be enough to kill them with the Bond of Passion next turn. This might be exactly lethal or very close to lethal because this is going to be off cross the send zombie army is going to be a 4-4. Four, four. So that's 6, 7, 8. Yeah, that's lethal. So as long as he plays something that's uh, more than 3 mana, then we win. I'm not sure what he's thinking, but he doesn't really have a choice. He has to play something anyway. Perfect. 
got there. <laughs> like I said, go big or go home. All right, let's go choose target creature, spell gorger, and then we deal two to OP. Boom. And that's pretty sweet. Like I said, even these mediocre uh, spells decks, they tend to overperform. You know what, I'm so impressed with how Crush Descent basically won us the game there that I'm kind of tempted to swap it for Nahiri. I keep going back and forth on whether to play Nahiri or not. I don't know, it's, it's, it's difficult. I guess we can start her and not start Bond of Passion. Bond of Passion is better if we know that we're on the play. Welcome to the final. So if we win this, then this would be a back-to-back 3-0, -back which is kind of cool. Yeah, we'll keep it. It's an, We're on the draw, so yeah, it's worth keeping. We could definitely do much better than this opening hand, but uh, let's see what we're up against first before we start panicking. So is this a mirror match? Spells? Not spells, okay. I wouldn't mind an island or a Tibble Trader, some, some two drop or source of blue. Oh, Chandra's Triumph is also good. Let's just kill this thing now. I don't want him getting a scry, uh, so that's fine. Passes the turn, so we're off to a good start. Okay, let's go under the God Pharaoh, discarding uh, Crash Descent. So we have a couple of options. We could go Burning Prophet No Escape, or we could just go Eternal Skylord. Let's go Eternal Skylord. Let's get some for more damage. There's not much he could do with two mana. So even if he has Jai's Greeting, I lose Spell Gorger. But he takes three, and I have six power on the board. Seems pretty good. <clears throat> Not, of course, not how you want the finals to go, but I've been on the other side plenty of times. It's not a fun experience, but it's part of magic. That's why even the pros, the only three, you know, like maybe 35 to 40% of the time, something like that. So more than half the time, even Luis Scott Vargas doesn't win a uh, limited draft. Of course, it depends who he's playing against, but you know, assuming he's playing against cal players more or less of his caliber. Okay. So the opponent discarded Sarkhan's Catharsis, so he's playing a very aggro deck, similar strategy to ours, which means he's playing high power creatures, which makes me tempted to bring in Bond of Passion. I think the he might be good. Let's take out one no escape. 
I don't think we'll have time for like 15 counter spells against our opponent. Uh, keep. Okay. So worst case scenario, next turn we can go onto the God Pharaoh. Otherwise, we'll play Skill Spellkeeper Weird, just as a blocker. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Leave one uh, mountain up in case I get uh, my one drop. Okay, we didn't get him, but we did get some some good stuff. We're still surviving. <clears throat> okay, so I like going uh, Burning Prophet, no escape. Chandra's Triumph. Well, that is unfortunate. So then I should have played a Thunder Drake, and then I would have had an, I would have had an extra blocker. So I think I need to jump now. Otherwise, my life total is going to be way too low, too fast. So let's see. This is about the only thing I could do. So this keeps back two attackers. And I need to hope to draw good. My opponent's stuck on lands, but he's kicking my butt. Omnic Solstice Cruelty. Oh, geez. Well, I have no choice. I need to block. Okay, it was a free roll attack for him. Raska's finisher, ouch. Not the best use of invade the city, but again, I'm really behind and I need all the help I can get. <coughs> So block here and jump here. I mean, I could totally stabilize, even if I play just like a Thunder Drake with another spell as a 3-4. No, stop playing stuff. Come on. Ugh. We gotta remember to play around Raska's finisher. That was a very disappointing turn. Yeah, well, I guess we're not dead. So say if I block here, I take three, four, five, I go to one. All right. All right, I've seen enough. 
How do I beat this deck? Goblin's definitely coming in. Has me this transmutation doesn't seem very good. Bon <coughs> Sorry, Bond of Fashion is out. We gotta get Tybalt down. If we get Tybalt, if we resolve Tybalt, I think we win. But it mauls, stays at six. That might help us actually. Let's see. So we should know that we have Sark and Scatharsis in our opening hand. It's not quite a dead card, but uh, I don't think we should, we, like, we need to structure our game plan around it. I'm just gonna kill it now. Okay, so most likely he takes Jaya. He could also take Thunder Drake thing, you know, preventing me from playing a, a four drop and slowing me down. But I think Jaya could really mess up his game plan, so he's probably gonna take her. Nope, takes Thunder Drake, okay. That's fine by me. Let's pass keeping up Crash Descent. And now we could even play uh, Invade the City and get in for four. Burning Prophet, sure. So let's go Burning Prophet. This will let us cry one. So there's a little bit more value in doing it this way. Nope, let's bottom that. So opponent knows that I have Sarkhan's Catharsis in my hand. And he can he can play around that quite easily. I can also just uh, block Spark Reaper, but I know that he's got Raska's finisher, so I'm really not looking forward to doing that. I might trade the Burning Prophet with a Zombie Army. Let's see. I mean, if he attacks, there's no blocks. Yeah, no, I'm not blocking. I learned the hard way. Okay. Spell gorge are weird. So let's tack. I guess I could also go Jaya and minus. But it's better to do it next turn because I'll get a counter. Like Jai is gonna die anyway, so at least uh, at least I'll have an extra counter on Spell Gorger Weird if I played like this. Okay, you have your own Jaya. If 
Thunder Drake. All right, I'm just going to go Jaya and uh, bottom this. And I'm going to minus this Jaya. <clears throat> and let's attack or not. I mean, let's just, let's just play it like this. So he's got two cards. Uh, what are the chances that one of them is Raska's finisher and that he hasn't played it yet? I'm not sure. Okay, so we're gonna dump Sarkin's Catharsis. We don't wanna play, any, play out any more lands. Actually, no, we do because he's gonna make us discard anyway. Let's see if he's got it. Okay, he just wants to sack it for value, sure. Even eternal. I think I almost rather play Aven Eternal here because it's going to give me two bodies. Uh, let's attack Davriel. And let's get two bodies down. Oh, Davriel was not one. Oh, this deals two. That's right. Never mind. So I get to keep both my creatures. Nice. Totally forgot. Yeah, I mean, uh, this lets you deal one more. On crop invader. Okay, let's just attack with even eternal. And I'm going to start hitting my opponent. I don't care if Jai is on the board. I think this is about uh, this is a race to see who can just get there first. So now I'm dealing four in the air. It's a four turn clock. Of course, my opponent can start sacking things with Reaper and drawing cards. But for these aggro decks, if they can't really finish out the game early, then it's very difficult for them to come back. And if all he's doing is playing like, you know, two drops and three drops, and I'm dealing damage in the air every turn, then I'm more likely to win this. I can like double block, sack something, trade. See what this is? Vizier of the Scorpion, that's fine. Still winning the race.
I wouldn't mind drawing uh, Kira's uh, Dam Breaker. That would let me proliferate Jaya and the zombie army. Let's see if he attacks. Okay, so just attacks with Mayhem Devil, targeting who? Targeting me. So this represents four damage, I go to seven. Okay. If I sag the zombie army, this thing will deal one to any target, which I don't really want. Nice. So what, what can Nahiri do? Nahiri can kill Mayhem Devil. So let's see if we can heal, kill Mayhem Devil first. This also triggers Burning Prophet, by the way. Gives everything for a strike. Cal is dismissal. Let's leave this on top. You know what, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna see if I can maybe mess with them. I'm kind of tempted to target Jaya. Let's see if I can get him to sack the devil. All right, I'm gonna target the devil, then I'm gonna cancel. Oh no, it can't target planeswalkers. It can only target tap creatures. Never mind. All right. Let's just do this now. I was, trying to be, I was trying to get a little too creative there. I don't think it was going to work. So in response, he's going to sack Mayhem Devil. To Reaper, targeting my zombie army. And I should sack my zombie army in response to give Oncrop Invader four power. I think that's the play order. Okay, so he sacks, gains one life. Let's see what this triggers. If it triggers me, then I'm kind of, I'm really concerned. He might just target Aven Eternal. Because this point of damage actually deals two point of damage. So let's see what he decides to target. We're down to the wire here. There's uh, not too many turns left. This, this, this is gonna resolve sooner or later. All right, so let's sacrifice Aven Eternal. In response, that fizzles, it goes to 11. Mahiri goes to three. And let's think about attacks. So I think I should attack like this. And like this. You can double block with Spark Reaper and Spell Border. But I think I'm fine with that. Because I'll kill them both off uh, Jaya's ability. Yeah, so it takes everything. 
goes to four. Yeah, I, I just have to hope that he doesn't have Sarkin's catharsis or anything that can that can hit face. Uh, if not, then I should be in a good spot. So far, so good. So we could, I wish we could Kalos dismiss, dismissal our own Jaya replayer minus and win right away, but we're one land short of that. So instead, I guess, Let's just attack with the Thunder Drake first, see what happens. Okay. All right, now, now I'll just do it. So, I don't think you can kill me in one turn. And I'd rather just have a guaranteed win condition next turn. And even though I cannot re uh, replay her, I am S1, I have three blockers. It's gonna be very difficult. And I think we're close to a back-to-back 3-0. -back -no. Yeah, if he's sacking his creatures looking for answers, that's a good sign. <clears throat> All right, so let's block to make sure that uh, our life total remains as high as possible. Uh, actually, no, sorry, let's block like this. So that I can sack something to kill Spellgorger. Down to the wire. Okay, so my guess is he's going to sack the zombie army to try to find something. Still thinking. All right, so he sacks Jaya, okay. So he goes to four. Hits me with hard fire, okay. So now I can sack. Well, do I even need to sack the 2-2? Two -two? I guess I don't care. I'll let that resolve.
Okay. Oh God, he had another hard fire. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Wow, came down to the wire. You know what? I'll still pose this video. It was a fun match. GG star opponent. Uh, I think it could have gone either way. I mean, if you didn't have the second heart, uh, heart fire in hand, game would have been ours. So hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.